agree with that. So uh, presumably we're all on the same page. And uh, uh, so we have uh, been working on this for a long time, particularly focusing on educating people around their rights and uh, trying to let the community know what's going on to the extent that we can find it out. And uh, so we're, I'm going to share with you some if the information about uh, racial profiling that we've learned over the years. The first um, slide, this is the Police Bureau's definition of what we call racial profiling, they call bias-based policing. And the language says, members are prohibited from taking any police initiative action that relies on race, ethnicity, or national origin, rather than the behavior of an individual, or information that leads the police to a particular individual who has been identified as being or having been engaged in criminal activity. And I underline any police initiated action because when most people think about racial profiling, they're thinking about traffic stops. But what's important is that this is not only about traffic stops, this is about all sorts of police initiated actions. And we're gonna take a look at that. Um, the uh, Racial Profiling Committee was cr created in 2007 and I sat on that. Uh, it was underneath uh, Mayor Potter and Chief Sizer. And it was a bit of a contentious group because uh, some of the police officers who were a part of that group did not want to use the word racial profile. Uh, it was uh, very, uh, they, when it came to that, they would say, you're calling us racist, they would fold their arms, uh, and uh, it gives excuses including information such as uh, black people commit more crimes. And I'm not gonna address that issue tonight, I just say if you haven't read Michelle Alexander's book about the new Jim Crow, um, you should, and uh, we, I'm not gonna debate that point. <laughs> Um, so, but uh, the uh, racial profiling committee was eventually replaced after Chief Sizer uh, created this uh, plan to address racial profiling, which is still in the process of being implemented uh, by the Human Rights Commission's Community and Police Relations Committee. And um, the next slide, thank you. When they were presented with the racial, with the uh, traffic and pedestrian stops data last year, um, Sergeant Stewart, who's here tonight, um, came with this slide, and this was an official police bureau slide that showed possible reasons why there's such disparity in the percentages of people stopped by the police and uh, the percentage of African Americans in the community. And what it shows uh, is that some possible reasons might be institutional racism, racism, implicit bias, and what I would call over-policing, what's listed here as police tactics and hotspot policing. And to go from a city where the police were saying, you're calling us racist to uh, city where the police are presenting, it's, it is possible that there's unbiased, un, 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 unconscious racism going on, and maybe why this is happening is a big step forward. So I want to contextualize these uh, statistics you see tonight by acknowledging that the police have made steps, at least in the language that they're using, um, and, uh, but let's, let's head on from there. So the next slide. Uh, so the average uh, percentage of post traffic stops over the years since 2004, and and mind you, for all these statistics, I put at the top that African Americans make up 6% of the population. The average uh, percentage of traffic stops is uh, 13%. So it's twice their re representation in the population for African Americans. And there's some talk about, oh, the police couldn't see what the race of the person was when they pulled the car over. We're gonna, I'm going to address that again in a second. But th then the question is, what happens after the stop? Oh, so next slide. This is the uh, searches, discretionary searches, which means if an officer makes an arrest or tows a car, they have to do a search. Those are uh, mandatory searches. These are the discretionary searches. And the percentages you'll see for white people uh, is about 4% every year, whereas the percentages for African Americans and the Latinos, the, the colors didn't come out quite right on this uh, projector, but uh, Latinos are in the middle between whites and African Americans. Uh, don't fare very well either, but the average for African Americans is about 9%. So more than twice the rate of discretionary searches. Uh, next slide, please. So then what gets found on those searches, and contraband that is found, um, you'll see that the uh, white bars are much higher. <laughs> that contraband is only found on people of color, about 80% as often as they're found on white people. So I can only conclude that people of color are being over-searched in the city. The good news is that the percentage of uh, contraband found is going up, which means that the police are actually doing a better job searching people when there's a reason to search them, 